Hey guys, happy whatever day this is, Thursday. It's been a long day, guys. It's been, today has been day in, okay? But God is good all the time. And this is a word that is not from a dream. It's from a real life experience, okay? Um, it, it's not the word that I planned on releasing because before today, I didn't have this word. Before the last couple hours, I did not have this word, okay? So um, happy Thursday. This is day four of the 40 days of surrender, right? I'm on for the next 40 days that started on Memorial Day, just giving you guys whatever God puts on my heart um, to give for that day, whether it's a dream, a vision, him speaking directly to my heart or however he wants to go with this thing. But this is from a real life experience. This is not from a dream and just allowing God to um, take this word in the direction that he wants to take it in. So let me try to make this um, as quick as possible. And then I'm going to give you guys your day back. But this is day four of the 40 days of surrender. And this word is titled a snow white awakening, a kiss of life, divine meeting, a snow white awakening, a kiss of life, divine meeting. Okay. Guys, God is funny, and I'm going to be pulling notes from my computer, and I'm also going to be pulling notes from my phone, okay? So bear with me. Um, <clears throat> there is this white Camry. I don't know where this person who drives this white Camry lives, but I have seen this white Camry so many times. And on the tag of this Camry, it says Snow White. Every time I've seen this Camry, and it's been over the course of the past few months, I've ignored it every single time. Every single time I've seen this Camry, I've completely ignored it, right? I saw it, I took note that, oh, it says Snow White, but I'm not one of those people that see something that says Cinderella or Snow White or Esther. I'm like, oh God, are you speaking? I look for God in everything, but at certain times, especially like marriage or love uh, prophetic words, I will notate it in my mind and I'll keep going about my business. But guys, Texas is so big. Texas is a big state. Normally, unless that person lives in your, your complex or something, you're not going to keep seeing the same car over and over and over. Texas, I mean, is huge. Okay, I've seen this car so many times. So today I'm going to an appointment and I'm on the phone with a sister in Christ. And lo and behold, this white Camry is in front of me again. And it says Snow White. This time, God nudged on my heartstrings to really pay attention. Mind you, I've seen this, this, um, this car a ton of times. Never sat down, say, God, what are you saying? I just never looked into it, okay? But God's timing is every, every, God's timing is everything is what I'm trying to say. But today I was nudged to take note of it. So I'm on the phone with my sister in Christ and I'm like, here's this car again. I'm like, I've seen this car so many times. I told her this was like the second time, but when I actually thought about it, this was not the second time I've seen this car. I've seen this car multiple times. OK, when I went to Miami to visit my sister in the hospital, and many of you guys are aware of that, I think that was what was that the beginning of March or something? Or I think it was the beginning of March when I went to Miami to see my sister. I was calling Sister Leslie on the Bluetooth and it said connecting Snow White to like Snow White in the number two. And I remember I had to go back to my text messages because I remember telling Leslie that she was connecting to the Bluetooth and it was saying Snow White 2 is connected or whatever. And I was like, what? I took note of it. Ne I never went back to it until today. So it's like today, the Lord just began allowing me to reflect on all of these Snow White moments. And I'm not a Snow White person. Like, so I wasn't, guys, I wasn't picking up on it, but it was meant for me to pick up on today. So again, this all white Camry is in front of me. The license plate says Snow White. I took note of it this time, even though I've seen this car many, many times. And in Texas, that is pretty rare because guys, Texas is so big. I hardly ever 
see a car more than one time with the same license plate that like I've, I've seen plates with stuff on it. I've taken notice of it. I hardly ever see the same exact car with the same plate right in front of me. It, it's Texas. It just does not happen, but it happens when God wants it to happen. Right. So the Lord brought me back to a word that I released. Maybe it was over a year ago. It had to be over a year ago. And if you guys remember, I used to have a Camry, a brand new, I had a 2020 Camry that I traded in for my car that I have now, my Challenger. And I remember when God gave me a dream about upgrading my Camry and he had me look and see what the word Camry actually meant. And Camry um, comes from the word Ken Murray, which means crown, right? So Camry means crown. And again, this was a all white Camry, snow white on the back. Y'all better catch this because I can't be explaining every little detail. Y'all better catch this. So I'm going to do a quick recap. Let me turn off this heater, guys. I'm going to do a quick recap of the story of Snow White so that this makes sense for who it's for. But the Lord is saying a Snow White awakening, a kiss of life, a, di a divine meeting. Help me get these words out, Lord a divine meeting, a snow white awakening is happening for many of his daughters in this season, a, a kiss of life, divine meeting. Okay. For many of you guys, <laughs> this word should be called, um, I do again. Okay. Cause for many of you, this is a marriage restoration, <laughs> but it should be called, I do again for whoever this is for. And this is a restoration word. I can't fit all of this in the title of YouTube. Um, but if this is for you and this is a marriage restoration, I do again is in place. Okay. And the Lord is saying a snow white awakening, a kiss of life, divine meeting. This is not just for those that um, have been married before and are awaiting restoration. Even if you've never been married before, take this how you see fit. Just take the word back to God. I'm not going to say who it's for, who it's not for. That's not my job. That's between you and God. But take this word back to God. Take me back to God. I am just being obedient. This was not on my agenda today. I woke up this morning studying a dream he gave me thinking I'm going to release the dream for day four of the 40 days of surrender. <laughs> Psych. That That's not what I'm releasing. So take this how you see fit. Take this word back to God. Don't ask me nothing in the comments. Don't put your life story in the comments. All that time and energy, take the word and just sit with God. But whoever this for, this is for, I know that it will bless you because it's so sweet. And many of you have been waiting. Many of you have went through the, the ringer with this thing, okay? Especially for those of you that are in a restoration that have, ooh, Snow White, this this word is going to hit you. Um, But this, again, it's not just for people that were already married before, okay? A Snow White awakening, a kiss of life, divine meeting is also for those that have never been married, but they are in their married season, okay? Everybody's in a different season. Every word is not for you. Even if this may be your, married, uh, your marriage season, take this word back to God, okay? So let's do a quick recap of um, Snow White. I don't know why I keep wanting to call the lady Cinderella. Um, okay. <clears throat> so Snow White, actually, let me actually give you guys this also. Let me show you how good God is. I saw the all white Camry that said Snow White on the license plate, took note of it, knew what God was telling me to do. That was on my way to my appointment. On my way leaving my appointment, about two hours later, I'm behind a truck that says Grim on it, right? Grim right? G-R-I-M, grim. And I'm like, literally spray painted on the truck. And I'm like, okay, let me take, I knew to take note of it because it nudged up my spirit. I didn't know what it meant. I was just like, okay, grim, cool. When I got home and the Lord had me doing my research on Snow White, most people would say Snow White uh, was invented or created by Walt Disney. No, 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 no. The Lord had me researching, okay? Let me show you how strategic he is. Snow White originated by two brothers. They are known as Brothers Grimm. I can't make this up. The Brothers Grimm. And it's two brothers, Jacob and, um, I forgot the other one's name, but they're known as the Brothers Grimm. 
Okay. I can't make this up. I knew the truck said grim in the back. I was looking at it. I took note of it. Didn't know what the truck had anything to do with Snow White, but Snow White was originally created by the brothers Grimm and produced by Walt Disney. Look that up. I can't make this up, y'all. I cannot make this up. So um, without further ado, let's get into this word, okay? And all this happened today, okay? On my way to an appointment and on my way back home, okay? And keep in mind, keep in mind, not wine, keep in mind that Camry means crowned, okay? So, or crown. So anyways, <sighs> help me with this word, Lord, and help me with my stuttering because I don't know what's happening. Snow White is a young princess known for her unparalleled beauty, characterized by her skin as white as snow, her lips as red as blood, and her hair as black as ebony. This reminds me personally when I was studying this word, um, her hair, her skin being as white as snow represents the purity of the Lord in whatever woman this is for. The lips as red as blood represented being covered in the blood of Jesus, okay? <laughs> being covered in the blood of Jesus. Um, and the hair as black as ebony represented God's glory over whoever this is for. And that's what I got personally when I was reading over Snow White, okay? Snow White's stepmother, the queen, is obsessed with being the fairest in the land, okay? And guys, this definition of Ferris does not mean like just, okay? Not that kind of Ferris. This means pleasing to the eye because of charming or flawless qualities, like superficially pleasing is what it means in this sense, okay? So again, the jealous queen, which is Snow White's stepmother, is obsessed with being the fairest in the land, the prettiest, right? Known for superficial factors. She owns a magic mirror. Can anybody say witchcraft? And I hope you guys are catching this as I'm reading. She owns a magic mirror that she uh, uses on a regular basis, asking it, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all, right? When the magic mirror reveals that Snow White has surpassed, I want you guys to catch this, has surpassed the queen in beauty, the queen becomes consumed with jealousy and decides to kill Snow White. She orders a huntsman to take Snow White into the forest and kill her. However, the huntsman is unable to carry out the deed and spares her life and lets her escape. Can anybody say favor from Jezebel's? Okay. Ah, all right. Snow White then finds refuge in the cottage of seven dwarfs who lives in the forest. She becomes friends with them and takes on a role of keeping their home. Can anybody say uh, thrown in the wilderness, but God provided divine connections when you were in that wilderness, okay? When you were trying to escape death, when all the Jezebels, the manipulators, whether man or woman was were after you and you were put in a wilderness asking God like, what's going on? And he put you in the vicinity of divine help. Y'all better catch this, okay? Discovering that Snow White is still alive, the queen makes several attempts to kill her. She disguises herself and uses various methods, such as a poison comb, witchcraft, a suffocating lace, witchcraft, and finally a poison apple, witchcraft. I hope y'all are catching this. So Snow White bites the poison apple and she falls into a death-like sleep after biting into the poison apple given to her by the queen in disguise. The dwarfs place her in a glass coffin, believing she is dead, but unable to bury her because her undiminished beauty. Okay, they couldn't bury her because, you know, a dead person, they start to deteriorate. Snow White stayed as beautiful as day one. Okay, nothing about her began to diminish. Okay, catch that for whoever this is for. Then the prince who had fallen in love with Snow White at first sight finds her in the coffin kisses her, and awakens her from her enchanted sleep. Snow White and the prince marry, and justice is served when the evil queen faces consequences of her actions. So they marry, the queen faces consequences. In some versions of Snow White, um, the queen is actually invited to their wedding, wedding and then punished for her wickedness. Can anybody say God will put a table, be set a table before your enemies, okay? set you at a table before your enemies. He will make your enemies your footstool. Okay, let's get into this translation, guys, and catch this for whoever this is for. 
Snow White represents the bride or the faithful partner in the marriage that embodied purity, innocence, and that was committed to this God-ordained relationship, okay? The prince symbolizes the groom, the husband, the divine husband in place to, to be a partner to this wife. He represents true love, protection, and the sanctifying grace that upholds a marriage. Mind you, um, the prince in Snow White gave her a kiss and she awakened. The Lord is speaking that you're getting ready to get that kiss of life, no longer the kiss of betrayal, okay? Judas kissed Jesus and it was a kiss of betrayal. It led to death. But the kiss, this meeting, this divine meeting, this uh, Snow White awakening is going to happen with a kiss of life. This person is coming to bring life. No longer death in this marriage, especially if this is a restoration. If you've never been married before, take that how you see fit. But if this is a restoration, before you face kisses of betrayal, this time it is a kiss of life, sweetheart. This is divine by God. The evil queen in Snow White, or not in Snow White, the movie, but in this prophetic word that God is having me give you guys, represents the external forces or individuals that attempted to undermine or destroy this marriage. It's symbolic of, or she is symbolic of envy, jealousy, deceit, and any other type of influence that wanted to disrupt this union ordained by God. The seven dwarfs symbolize supportive divine assistance when you were in a wilderness when you felt alone when you had felt like you had to escape death standing for what god told you to stand on he gave you divine assistance he put uh brothers and sisters from the body of christ to uplift you whether that was a prophetic voice your pastor whoever he positioned you in a place mind you snow white was in a forest with these dwarfs so see that forest as your wilderness she was there because she was trying to escape death. But they represent in this prophetic word, not in the movie, because the movie the movie can be seen as prophetic, but that's not why it was created. But the Lord is showing the seven doors as divine assistance that he placed around you when you were in a place that you thought you would never come out of, okay? The poison apple represents temptations and deceptive influences that sought to harm or corrupt this marriage, it did not work. It symbolized the lies and manipulators used to create discord, the Jezebels. And a Jezebel could be a man or a woman, honey. Manipulators that will seek to, to destroy, to deceive. The glass coffin reflects the state of crisis or dormancy in that marriage where it appeared that it was lifeless. It appeared that the external attacks and the internal conflicts and everything that came after this marriage was working. It appeared that you were dead, that this marriage would never happen because <laughs> you're long gone. Oh, we, we got rid of her. She's dead. Whether that getting rid of was coming from a mother-in-law, a counterfeit, uh, uh, a Jezebel, whoever, whoever. It appeared to be dead, but it was not. The Lord is saying that you're getting ready to experience this kiss of life, this meeting, this coming together, a snow white awakening. And I pray that who this is for, that you catch this spiritually, because I'm not going to go any deeper into it. I feel like I've given you enough to take and go sit with God. But the Lord is saying, a snow white awakening, a, a kiss of life, divine meeting. A snow white awakening, a kiss of life, divine meeting. This will not be a kiss of betrayal like it was before. Again, if you are someone and this word is for you and it's a restoration, the kisses of betrayal are gone. It will not be a kiss of betrayal. This is a kiss of life. This is a divine meeting. Who God brings together, let no man separate. And he even brought me back to... <laughs> Uh, Sister Leslie, who has a channel on YouTube, The Creator's Heart, many of you follow her on here. That's like my blood sister. She had a, a vision of me a year ago. And at this time, my hair was black. But in the vision, she saw me as Snow White and my hair was this color. <laughs> so as I was studying this word, the Lord brought me back to that vision. And again, she gave me this vision. I believe it was uh, it was well over a year ago well over a year ago. Um, and again, my hair was black at that time. But in the vision, 
my hair was the color that it is now. The Lord is saying, this is the now word for whoever this is for. And I don't know who it's for, but whoever this is for, this is a now word. It's a snow white awakening, a kiss of life, divine meeting. That that queen, those queens, those people <laughs> tried to kill you. They thought they had won, but they will see your ending, your, your marriage to this prince, to this ordained husband that you're supposed to be with. And they will face consequences for their actions. God is, is setting you at a table, sitting you at a table before your enemies. He's making them your footstool in this marriage. And the verses the Lord brought me to for this word, I'm going to read from um, Luke chapter eight. I'm reading from the Berean study Bible uh, and it's titled the healing touch of Jesus. Y'all better catch this. I'm going to read from Luke 8, verses 49 through 55a, meaning the first part of verse 55. While he was still speaking, Jesus, someone arrived from the house of the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, he told Jairus. Do not bother the teacher anymore. But Jesus overheard them and said to Jairus, don't be afraid, just believe and she will be healed. Y'all better catch this, who this is for, whoever's waking up. Whoever's waking up, you better catch this. When he entered the house, he did not allow anyone to go with him except Peter, John, James, and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, everyone was weeping and mourning for her, but Jesus says, stop weeping. She is not dead, but asleep. And they laughed at him knowing that she was dead. But Jesus took her by the hand and called, called out, child, get up. Her spirit returned and at once she got up. You better catch this, who this is for. Her spirit returned and at once she got up. This kiss of life that you're getting originated from the Lord God and do not forget that. It originated from the Lord God. Do not forget who your help comes from. You were never dead. You were only asleep, whoever this word is for. I'm also going to read from John 11, verses three through four, NIV version. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. They're talking about Lazarus. When he heard this, Jesus said, the sick, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. This marriage death, what they put you through, what you went through, the witchcraft threw your way. Okay, it was not to end in death. It was for God to get the glory out of the story. And that is what he's doing in this hour. Catch this word. Um, the last verse is going to be Proverbs 31, verse 29. And I'm going to read from the uh, ESV version. Actually, nope, sorry. I'm reading from the Berean Study Bible. And I'm actually reading Proverbs 31, verses 28 through 30. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband praises her as well. Many daughters have done noble things, but you surpass them all. Why was the queen mad in Snow White? Because Snow White surpassed her beauty. Y'all better catch this. I'm gonna start over. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband praises her as well. Many daughters have done noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is worthy to be praised. Catch this word. I'm gonna end the word right there, guys, um, because I feel like I've given you enough to take this word and go sit with God, but he is saying a snow white awakening, a kiss of life, divine meeting. God is doing some things. Um, take this word to him. Go sit with him on it. Again, I didn't plan on giving this word, but uh, God had other plans. Just like um, they didn't plan on you waking up. They didn't plan on this marriage being a living thing, <laughs> uh, but they were wrong. God had other plans. So with that being said, that is the word for the day, guys. I love you. Um, I hope you have a, a great day. This could also be seen the other way around if you're a guy as well. Okay, Adam was put in a deep sleep, but he got a healing wake up from God, a healing touch from God. And when he woke up, his wife was right in front of him. So um, yeah, this can be seen the other way around as well. 
take this word to God, take me to God, let him give you more on it. But I love you guys. I hope you have a great day and we will talk soon. Bye. And I hope I didn't call Snow White Cinderella any time in this word, but if I did, I went, I meant Snow White, but I keep wanting to say Cinderella and I'm not going to listen back to this word to try to correct anything because, oh, no, no, no. So if I said Cinderella at any time in this word, this was about Snow White, okay? But it's a reason why Cinderella keeps popping up in my spirit. Um, but take this word to God. That's it, y'all. I love you. Have a great day and we'll talk soon.